Hello, welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number seven. Doing this as a raw version, it's going to be a little bit different today, uh, but I'm so excited you're here. Uh, again, it's just been phenomenal uh, to see so many portrait painters doing this challenge. Um, people from all different venues of life, uh, different seasons of life, but I think we all have in common that as I record this we're going through COVID-19 and you have chosen to paint a portrait during this time which is something challenging to do um, but it gives your mind something different to occupy itself with you're creating beauty in the world and you're developing your skills so that when this challenge is over you'll be able to continue on and you're going to be able to paint more portraits you can be proud of so I'm just excited to be able to teach you here uh, today we're going to be learning how to paint fantastic facial features fantastic facial features and uh, this is where the painting is starting to get towards the end of the process but I want to share something that's really encouraging to me in the Facebook group where I started this challenge uh, we've got a lot of people chiming in with uh, different experiences they've had um, during this painting process and a woman by the name of Judy uh, here's what she has to say you can see this in the Facebook group for yourself but she says, I'm so excited. I am just beginning the glazes on the face after lesson four, and a neighbor came over to help my husband repair the lawnmower. So I guess you can see in the picture, she's painting outside. She's uh, painting on her porch, or she had the painting displayed there. I was painting on the porch, and he saw the portrait we were all working on. He asked me if I would do a portrait of his wife for her birthday later in the summer. I think I just got my first commission portrait gig. Woohoo! Congratulations, Judy. So what does someone charge for a 16 by 20 portrait? How about that? She's just doing this portrait painting challenge, painting her portrait out in the porch, and the neighbor walks by and sees it, and he's like, hey, I'd like something like that. I'd like you to do a portrait for, for me, for my wife. That's how this begins. You know, you do a portrait, you step out in faith, use the talent God has given you, and then it gets multiplied and pretty soon you're doing portraits for other people and you're blessing them with your talent and making a little income on the side as you should as an artist and it's just kind of a reciprocal process so I'm so excited for Judy that is just awesome high fives to her and it looks like uh, we scroll down here and a woman by the name of Eleni says lesson four is done the background shadow on the lower left got sloppy so she's experiencing a little challenge, as many of the people doing this challenge are. Um, in a few places I see my drawing is off, but overall I absolutely love learning this new way of painting. My first portrait, and I have not had any art lessons. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here. You know, and this is her first portrait, man. She did a really good job for her first portrait without ever having any art lessons. You should check that out in the Facebook group. So lots of good comments here. Some people struggling with uh, coloring and that's just part of learning a new technique. But if you stick with it, you're gonna get better and better and better. And I'm gonna be opening up a chance for you to work with me in a further way, in a closer way. And it's gonna be an opportunity for you to grow in your, your skills. So I'm gonna let you know more about that later. But whatever you decide to do, just keep working at this concept of being a portrait artist. If this is something you would like to do to add value to the world, to paint people that you know, to be able to paint them and make it look like them, and give fantastic gifts for your friends and family members, or to do it for a living, or just a side income, side hobby. You, know? um, you might be retired and looking for something to do. This is just a great thing you can do um, to use that gift and you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't have that gift inside of you my, my goal is just to help you to perfect it so all right I want to encourage you as well encourage you as well if you haven't already done so sign up for this challenge because we've got so many artists taking this they're excited and I want you to be excited too and I want you to grow in your portrait painting skills so go to realisticacrylic.com backslash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge and if you sign up you'll get my welcome kit which includes 
a uh, supplies list, my palette layout so you know how to lay out your palettes so your paints don't get muddied up, and you also get the reference photos as well, so the gridded reference photos. And if you sign up today, I think you're really going to be encouraged because it's, it's not too late. You can still hop in here. Um, I'm putting out lesson seven, then lesson number eight. You'll have access to all the previous lessons as well. So lessons uh, one through, through seven, you know, you'll, you'll have access to those. And then when lesson number eight comes out, I'll email you and let you know. So you're not going to miss anything. Um, but yes, let's dive in and let's start working on this face. We're going to be concentrating mostly on the facial features. And I did do some painting in between lesson number six and this lesson here, lesson number seven. And that, that's going to be as a bonus video, actually three bonus videos. Um, and there's more than that because I had some bonus videos between lesson five and six. And those will be available at Realistic Acrylic All Access. And that's something that will be available. I'll let you know more about it. But with how long it takes to do a painting, it's about 20 hours for me to complete a painting. I have to make sure I can keep this class concise enough. So um, I put the excess footage of me painting it on the bonus videos. And I think just about every minute, every minute of my painting has been captured on video. So you can watch and see the exact process how to do it. But what I did between lesson number six and lesson number seven is I added some more glazes to the face. Um, I added some uh, pinkish tones, some orangish tones all over, darkened his hat with I think two or three more glazes, the background, a little bit on his shirt. I darkened some of the values on his eyelid area, eyebrows, mouth, nose, anywhere where there are some dark values just to um, basically make the whole thing look very cohesive. Now before I get into this this lesson too too much further I do want to ask a blessing because I, I really do need God's help to be able to paint and I think it's a great way to um, just do your very best work to invite God, the master artist, the one who created the world, everything beautiful we can see uh, just to invite him to help us as we create something, you know, and I think that's that's a good way to go, and we'll end up producing our best work. So, Father, I ask you would bless this painting. Help me to be able to teach this class well. Lord, we're just finishing up here with two more lessons to go, and I ask, Lord, that you would bless it. I pray that you would help me to capture the likeness of, of Larry here, of this man we're painting. Um, Lord, I pray you would bless all of the students. I pray they'd have confidence and peace. They'd be able to work out any issues in their painting, any areas that might be muddy or the coloring is off. I pray you'd give them peace and confidence that they would finish well, Lord, that they would just stay with the process, continue adding layer upon layer, and finish the painting well, and produce a portrait that they would just be amazed that they were able to do. So I ask this blessing, Lord, upon this class, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to get a quick sip of water here. I'm doing this, this class more of a raw, unedited version today. I might edit it later, but I just want to make sure I get this video out, and editing does take a while. Um, so I want to concentrate in the Facebook group and the YouTube videos here just to get this uh, lesson out to you in a timely basis, and that's the most important thing. Um, so it's going to be a little raw. I'm not cutting things out. Um, but I hope this is beneficial and let me know about this process if this if this still works for you And I really appreciate your feedback because that helps me to be able to produce better tutorials and courses for you All right, I'm gonna get a quick sip of water Now I also want you to know if you have any questions or comments Leave them below in the video if you need any help with this portrait. I'll be happy to help you out. That's part of my job, and it's my joy to be able to serve you in that way. So leave me a comment. Shoot me an email. And I do have a lot of comments and questions coming in right now. It's hard to get back to all of them as quickly as I'd like. But if you give me a chance, I will uh, answer your question as best I can. Um, it, 
It uh, might take a little longer right now, but, but leave me a comment. I think leaving a comment here in the YouTube video is a great way to get a hold of me, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this lesson. Okay, without further ado, let's finally begin painting, and let's dive right in. Let's dive in, zoom in the camera on his face. I'm going to concentrate on the eyes. I'm going to take my round brush. This is a size number four. And I'm going to mix some raw umber dark and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, and a bit of alizarin crimson together, making kind of a dark brown color, a little to the warmish side. You want it fairly warm. And we're going to go over some of the facial features. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to this. A little bit of burnt sienna, raw sienna. I'm going to make kind of a gradient. And then we'll add some alizarin crimson again. And if you see here, I have kind of a gradient from light to dark. So it's dark on this side up here, if you can see that. Let me use my other hand, dark up here and then lighter down here. So just kind of a gradient right there. And that'll enable me to get some shading in here on his face. But I'm going to add a glaze on the interior of his eye. And this round brush will give me a lot of precision. So I can place this glaze just where I want it. I'm going to wipe away with my finger if it goes into an area that I don't want it to. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring these shadows down. So this is basically the first step of this process. Here the steps are not quite as clear cut when we get further along in the painting. And I was trying to think of ways to segment the steps, but you're kind of skipping around in different places. Um, but you, you do want to tie in some of the darker values. You want to tie in some of the darker values with the mid-tone values. And when I mean mid-tone, I, I just mean on a scale from light to dark, <clears throat> it would be those areas that are not, not quite as dark. They're just kind of in the middle. They're just kind of a middle gray if we were to look at it from a black and white standpoint. But since we do have color, we have to be mindful of the co color as well. So, we're tying in these dark values. Where are the darkest values? Well, they're in his hat. They're in his eyeball areas. And his nose. These areas in his mouth. You know, these uh, areas between his teeth and cheeks. And so those are all very, very dark, and we just want to tie these values in. I know you can't see the reference photo in the video, um, but uh, you can see it in your own picture as you paint along. And I just want you to be aware of what's going on, so when I zoom out, I'll kind of point some things out from that video again. But I'm just tying in these values. So here this is a mixture maybe Oh, I'd say 50% paint, 50% medium at this point. And again, because I'm using a, a small brush, there's, it's a, a thinner amount of that medium. It's, it's not as thick. And so it's not going to make as big of an impact on your canvas. It's not going to get really out of control or really opaque. <clears throat> so you can get away with using a little bit of a thicker or more opaque glaze at this stage in the painting, especially as you're switching to these smaller brushes. Does that make sense? Because if you have a larger brush, it's just going to hold a more glaze, and the application on your canvas is going to be a lot thicker. Therefore, it's going to look darker. And that's why you want to start making your glazes more opaque at this stage as you're getting into these small areas. So that's really what we want to do here. If we can call this step number one, we're wanting to bridge out of these 
darkest values into the midtone values. So I'm trying to get some glazes to replicate the look of his eyebrows and I don't want to paint every eyebrow here. Now this is very important because we want our facial features to be fantastic because uh, that's what people are going to recognize. They, if you're doing a portrait on commission you want to make sure that it looks like the person you're trying to paint and that's even more important than the realism. If it doesn't look like Bob or Sue or Harry or Larry in this case, <laughs> it doesn't really matter how realistic it is. If it's not Larry and you are doing a... Now, for an academic exercise, you could get away with it not looking like Larry, but if you were doing this on commission or you were doing it for a loved one, boy, it better, it better look like the person you're trying to paint. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but I've found that it does need to be somewhere around 85 to 90% accurate. And that's, there's no way to quantify exactly how accurate it is, but it, ju it, it just needs to be close. It just needs to be close. And uh, getting these facial features aligned is just an important way of doing that. So, so really step number one is to bridge the gap, you know, between your dark values and light values. Really pay attention to your reference photo. And... I'm going to probably need to do a whole whole course just on this subject, but you know, like the eyes are, are the most important part of the face. And you really, really need to get that thickness in the eyelid area. Um, it's just very, very, very important. I'm going to see if you can see the reference photo here. Maybe if I zoom it in, maybe you can see it a little bit. But... Um, a lot of people think that uh, a lot of people think that eyelids are, are paper thin, or at least they paint them that way. And I've seen a lot of artists paint eyelids, and you know they use just a thin brush to get that line. But we have to remember that eyelids represent several layers of skin. They're very very thick. Okay, so if you were to tip your head back and you were to look at your eye, or you maybe have a spouse tip their head back and you look at their their eyelid, you'll see it's it's quite thick. Um, it's maybe you know a centimeter thick, um, or an eighth inch thick. And because of that, you can't just paint it with with a thin line. You have to use a thick enough brush stroke, and you have to use several brush strokes. Not not only to get that thickness of the eyelid itself, but also to get the shadow that it casts on top of the eye, the white of the eye, called the cornea. And you do that by adding another glaze on top of that glaze. And as you add these glazes, you have your surface shadows, your cast shadows. It's really going to tighten up your realism. It's really going to make the likeness look that much more real. And that's what I'm trying to do right here. So I'm really trying to see the thickness of his eyelid. Because at this three-quarters angle, his head is turned away from the viewer. And so you're seeing the thickness of that eyelid as it's tipped away. You're not going to see it as much when a person's looking straight on, but as they turn the other way you will see the thickness of that eyelid implied, especially on the corner here. So if I zoom in, as I zoom in you can see that, that thickness right up here. I'm really trying to portray that. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at the reference photo, if I can just pull this tablet off of its holder and you can see that. I got this zoomed in about as far as it can go. But really see that thickness and it creates this triangular shape. And you want to see those shapes. That's just super, super important to see those shapes. Um, and as you do, as you really look at those shapes and the, just the amount of area they occupy, you're going to create a great sense of realism. Let's, let's put this back here in its holder. And I'm going to just paint a little bit more along those lines. And so you're looking to create a kind of warm brown. It doesn't matter the exact color colors you use to get there. You could get there with burnt sienna um, and raw umber dark and maybe a little bit of raw sienna. 
You might have to add a little ultramarine blue, or you could use alizarin crimson and raw sienna, which together kind of create a burnt sienna. But the main idea is just to get a warm brown, and it should be fairly dark, and you don't want it you don't want it too warm. Um, if I were to paint it on a white piece of paper here, and it'll give you an idea of what it looks like, that might be helpful for you. Something like this. There, you can see it now. Just turn it towards the camera so you can see that. Something like that, okay, as opposed to a black, as opposed to a black, or a, a cooler blackish color where we have kind of raw or dark and ultramarine blue and it's not warm enough it would look like this and it's a little darker in value as well this is raw or dark and ultramarine blue um, and it has more ultramarine blue in the mix and that something like this would be good for his hat but a color like this is going to work fantastic for painting over his eyes painting over the edges of his eyes and why is that the reason is is because it's dark enough in value that we can we can get that dark line that dark line representing the fold I'm gonna zoom in even more you really want to show you this all right that's very close so we're getting not only this dark line right here okay the cast shadow but we're gonna also get a little bit of a nuance above it and you can pull from the lighter mixture for that now let's see where is that on here I can show it to you this is going to be a little trickier all right maybe right here see this lighter mixture we can pull from the lighter part of it the darker parts up there on the top lighter part right there we can pull from that lighter part with our brush because it's just a bit lighter than the other spot and we can add it above add it above so we're not only darkening this other glaze but we're going above it into the lighter value and we're adding a nuance that makes the edge not quite so harsh it softens it up and it gives you more of a realism and I've seen that you know with a lot of uh, artists whose work I critique I do a lot of critiques at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School when you're a member. Uh, personalized video critiques. And a lot of artists whose work I critique, they tend to get these very, very harsh edges where the values are over-exaggerated. And so you have the, these really, really uh, high contrast spots. Um, you'll have a dark value like right here with this eyelid fold, but then the value above it is too bright and right now mine is too bright but eventually I'm gonna knock it down I'm gonna darken it and that's gonna get it more realistic so for example this area right up here if I add a glaze and let's just say I add this this glaze and I'm pulling from that lighter portion of the mixture and I'm just gonna add it right and down here okay, just right and down here and Just going to go over this and I'm using this small round brush because it gives me a lot of precision. You might want to use a flat brush if that feels more comfortable for you. If you want to use a flat brush use something like this size 8 or 3 8. But again as I darken just this spot right here now it leaves this spot as being a little lighter in value and that's going to give me a greater sense of realism. Now, I'm going to have to go back over this and smooth that out, but um, that's a start. And I'm going to show you something else. Um, I'm going to zoom out just a bit so I can show you the mixture on my palette. But let's add a little bit of titanium white. And just add it to this mix and a little bit of raw sienna. Because at some point here we have to convert this to semi-opaque and I guess this could be step number two now you're going to be kind of moving back and forth between these steps because 
depending on what area you're working, you're going to have to um, add certain things to one spot and not to another and add certain spots here and certain spots there. You're trying to work everything evenly, but it is a little challenging to do. It is a little challenging to, to work it all evenly because there's certain points where you want to focus like on just the eyes, just the nose, just the mouth, and certain spots might seem a little bit neglected. And that just happens. That just happens um, as you get closer to the end of the painting. That's okay, because some parts are going to look more finished than others. And you might think, oh, this isn't looking so good because, you know, this is too dark and that's too light. Just, just stick with the process. I would encourage you to just stick with the process. Keep working those other areas. Darken them. Bring them into accordance with some of the areas that are not as developed. And you'll find that it'll all come together at the end. But uh, anyway, we're adding titanium white. Titanium white to this mix, all right? And raw sienna. And we're going to glaze. We're just going to add a little glaze here. And uh, what the titanium white is going to do, can you see that mixture? Let's show it to you here. Titanium white is going to start to smooth out some of the roughness of the glazes. And it also allows you to make a bigger impact right away. With, especially with a round brush. So as I go over this area right here, because I have a little titanium white in there, it just tends to darken the area. I know that seems kind of counterintuitive, but the titanium white seems to add a little bit of a... I'm going to zoom in so you can see that better. It just seems to add a little more um, thickness to the paint, I guess you could say, a little more impact to it, to the layer. To the glaze. It's still translucent because we have matte medium added, but we do need to start shifting into glazes that have a little more opacity. Less medium, more paint, and a little bit of titanium white added. But remember, not to all areas, just to the areas that are a little lighter in value. You don't want to add titanium white to dark values like the hat because that's going to make it look muddy. It's going to be way too light. So just for areas that are more mid-tone to lighter values. Um, I'm going to add some of the shading in here to his eyes. I'm really paying attention to these individual shapes. Um, we're working from basic to complex, simple to complex. So because I have some of the foundation layers in place, I can now start adding more complexity, looking at some of the individual patterns on his eye. Um, excuse me, I have to get a quick sip of water again so I can keep my voice. <clears throat> but a little more complexity. And I'm going to add a shadow underneath his eyes, right here. So this is a cast shadow coming from the upper eyelid fold. And I'm going to bring that down then into the crow's feet area. I'm going to darken that area a bit. And I'm still kind of working out of this main mixture that I had from the beginning there. Raw sienna, uh, raw umber dark, I think a bit of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Just a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. Probably not as much as necessary, but um, you can use that ultramarine blue only if you're going over these areas with dark values and if you're using a very small brush. Again, what you're shooting for is that, that kind of uh, darker brown with a slightly warmish cast to it. That's what you're shooting for. All right, so I'm going to move over to the eye on the right, and I'm going to add some um, wrinkles to the bottom. Now, I want to analyze my reference photo and say, what's the color like? Is it a warm brown? And if it's a warm brown, okay, if it's a cool brown, it would be kind of bluish grayish. But if it's a warm brown, it's either going to be red or yellow. It's going to be a brownish going towards the reddish side 
or brown going to the yellowish side. And uh, in looking at this, I can see it is a little more to the yellowish side. So I'm going to pull again from that mixture that is a little more yellowish. And if you can see it here on my palette, right there we go. It's just, again, raw sienna, raw umber dark, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna or alizarin crimson. That will create that color. We're just going to add that right below his eye area. Now, again, I'm going to encourage you as you're watching this to leave me some feedback as comments here under this video. Leave your questions, leave your thoughts because I want to get better at teaching. I've been painting for over 20, 20 years, 20, over 25 years. I've been teaching for just about three or four years now and I want to get better at teaching and so as you leave me comments you'll help me to get better. You leave me questions and say Matt how do you do this or how do you mix that? I don't quite understand this, I don't quite understand that. Um, and Don't be afraid to, to uh, leave me those kind of questions because I, I can address those if not in this series I can address it in another series, another set of lessons in a course because um, I want to be able to share the knowledge that I've gained over years of painting and also from what I learned originally when I learned this technique. And I want to uh, pass that knowledge unto you and so that you don't have to spend years and years developing your skills. You can gain a competency in a matter of months. Now, of course, you'll get better as you paint for years and years. But if you can create a fantastic portrait in the matter of a few months, wouldn't that be great? And I have some students that have created amazing portraits within a matter of just weeks, you know, in their first portrait. Sometimes it does click for, for some students right away. But for others, it'll take longer. It'll take months. But wouldn't months be better than years? <laughs> Anyway, leave a comment for me. Help me to help you uh, become a better artist. All right, I'm just going to add some of these darker tones right here on his lower eyelid fold. So I'm basically pulling from that same mixture and really wanting to dial in these facial features. Let's, uh, let's just move this shape, this glaze, all the way over to the edge of his eyeball. Originally I thought there was the cornea, the white of the eye was showing there, um, but I realized it was not that, it was actually a reflection on his iris, on the blue part of his eye. And that's what I want to capture. Um, and then I'm going to define his I'm going to define this eye a little bit here. So we, we want to, I guess you could state, say step number three is to really um, define some of your shapes. Really define some of your shapes. Um, so from your sketch you're going to have some things that were not quite in balance. You're going to have areas in your sketch that you just weren't quite able to capture originally and um, also also you're going to have areas from painting where you lost the likeness of your sketch you lost the likeness of your sketch as you added glazes and you know maybe added too much here too much there on the eyes or the nose and pretty soon the likeness got thrown off and now is the time to go back and tighten up those areas that got a little bit um, ambiguous and obscure from all the paint layers and that's what we're doing in this process tightening things up fixing things that just were never right in the sketching stage and fixing things that were right but got kind of messed up in the earlier layers in the underpainting um, so we're going to tighten those things up and it's never too late to fix a portrait so let's dive back in I'm going to zoom it in again on the eyes and we'll continue I'm going to zoom it out just about that far. There we go. All right. 
and let's see here. So I want to I really want to pay attention to his eyes and I mixed a blue into this ultramarine blue into this glaze. So if I show you on my white card, this is kind of what that glaze looks like. It's actually, oh, it's more of a brownish gray, but it's a little cooler than what I had before. And I think it's gonna work for defining the edge of his eye. I'm gonna add just a touch of titanium white. A little bit of titanium white, can you see that? There we go. And see how that looks, just test it on the canvas. Add a little bit of matte medium to it and thin it out. So now it's gonna look something like this. That's what it looks like applied. This, I think this, this probably helps you to really see what it looks like when you don't have um, the layers on the canvas to throw it off. So it's just an idea I just came up with now. I hope you like it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, add this glaze to his eye and really kind of perfect the coloring of his eyes. Um, Yeah, and I don't want to make it so opaque that I lose that luminosity, so I'm going to just dab that with my finger. That was a little too opaque. Um, let's uh, add more matte medium to that, thin it out. So now we're looking at something like this. Compared to what we had, you can see it, it's a little more translucent now. Let's go back over that. So what, what I want to do is just kind of really dial in the color of his eyes. And they look, they appear to be kind of a dark blue, but we don't want to use actual just straight blue. I mean, if you look on my palette, or again, you look at this here, I need to just get a white card really quick. Here we go. If you look right here, you can see the color I'm doing. It's, it's actually... It actually looks pretty great, doesn't it? You compare it to um, ultramarine blue if I hold up the tube. Let's put that where you can see it. Uh, sorry about that, it's a little hard when the camera zoomed in. There you go. You see the difference? See how that looks actually more gray than blue? So the last thing you'd want to do for eyes that are blue is use blue straight out of the tube. No, nope. instead you want to use more of a gray because when you have it up against the warm skin tones, it's going to look bluer because it's a complementary color. Okay, so just a little tip, a little secret for you. Use gray to create blue eyes. Let me get a sip of water here again. Now, are there times when you're going to use more of a straight blue? Yes, when the light is really shining on the eye. Um, but here it's in shadow, so it's more appropriate to use something less vivid. Okay, so now I'm, I'm dialing in that blue color, and that's good. I think I'm going to let it dry, but then I would come back to it, and I would actually add some glazes to create the depth. That darker ring around the iris, darker shadows on the top being cast from the upper eyelid fold, and then when we add those little reflections, you know, like what we have in the reference photo, these fun little reflections here. That's when it's really going to pop. That's when it's really going to have that special something. But it's better to, to wait, excuse me, it's better to wait in the later parts of the painting, the later stages, to really get that in. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to hop around here and I'm going to go to, I'm going to paint on his nose a little bit. Okay, now what I want to do is adjust the nose. And again, I was telling you we want to adjust the facial features. And in the sketch, I made his nose a little too short. There's too much of a distance between his nose and his upper lip here. 
and I want to change that and bring the nose down a little closer to his upper lip. So this is again where you can adjust some of these features. Um, so what I want to do is mix a color that's similar to what I have here for this lower area of the nose, this area where the light is reflecting from his shirt. I'm going to start with titanium white. I think you can see that. I have it next to matte medium here. And I'm going to add some raw sienna off to the side and just bring that in. Just bring that in. Maybe a touch of raw or dark. I'm going to pull that into the mixture. It's going to be fairly opaque. The titanium white, the matte medium, is just to thin it out, basically. So it's probably a ratio of 70% uh, paint, 30% medium. And I'm going to add on to the bottom if this matches, and it seems to match pretty well. So again, very opaque. It's opaque enough to cover over that dark area of his nostril. And uh, bring this down just a little bit. And I'm going to add on to the bottom here as well. And that might be it for that. Now I'm going to have to use a slightly darker color, so let's introduce a little organic red orange. And a bit of raw sienna. And I'm going to kind of bring the nostril down a little on this side as well. And maybe a little bit on the interior of his nostril. And then I'm just going to soften up the edge a little bit. And I might have to wait until that dries to really blend that more. But yeah, I'm going to leave that there for now. If I decided I came down a little too far with it, I can always cut up. I can always cut up inside again using a slightly darker color and just kind of push and pull back and forth until I I like what I see. But uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for now. And I might have to refine the uh, length of the nostril a little bit as well. Just compare it to my reference photo and see if it's lining up with the teeth. And I know you can't see that right now, but I just want to look at the reference photo and see if it really is where it should be. Alright, I'm going to let that dry, and if I don't like it, I'll come back in and refine it more. But um, that's how you can um, adjust some features that are off. Just by matching the color opaquely, thin it out with matte medium so you don't have a bunch of texture on your canvas. That can be very frustrating. And I know I've worked with some artists that have built up thick areas of texture. You know, if you're using those heavy body paints, really thin it out using matte medium. Heavy body paints are still challenging to use. They're not the best. Nova Color would be a better option. It's more of a fluid paint. But if you have heavy body, you have to really, really thoroughly mix it into the matte medium. It takes a lot of mixing to cut that buttery texture down to something that's more fluid. So, uh, But you can make it work. You can make it work and thin it out with matte medium so it's fluid enough and then you won't have big globs of texture on your canvas and you'll uh, avoid unnecessary frustration. So, all right, um, I'm gonna add a little shadow right here. I'm gonna darken this little divot here on its nostril. So let's, uh, let's, take, some, uh, let's take some of this uh, mixture we had from before and we're gonna add some burnt sienna to it and a little more raw sienna and a little organic red orange or pyro orange. And you could use cadmium red or cadmium orange. That would be fine too. Um, and we're just going to add that glaze right up here on his nostril. And uh, that's going to really 
help to uh, make his nose look more accurate. And we're going to need to blend out that nuance there, so I'm going to take a little bit of uh, lighter color, raw sienna, and even a little bit of uh, Indian yellow, just a bit of Indian yellow, and let's soften up the edge of this a tiny bit. And we're going to need to probably add even more glazes after this. this is only going to be the start. Let's add a little glaze though to the tip of the nose. I had this mixture. Remember the mixture I used to cover this area up? Let's take that and add a little Indian yellow. I want to liven that up, make it chromatically a bit more intense. You can see the mixture a bit of Indian yellow and organic red orange. So it doesn't get too canary yellow. We want that to be a good mixture. A bit more organic red orange. See how I'm wiping it off away from my mixing area. Then I'm bringing that back into the mixing area down here. And we're going to add that just on top of the wing of his nose. Overlapping the previous layer. And then going on top of the white. Going on top, well it's not white, but it's a very, very light tan. It's basically the original, the original um, toning layer that I did. It doesn't have much on it, but I want to add some shading there. And that's going to take a few layers to really achieve that. But let's maybe add a little bit of shading right here on the ball of his nose and up there. Just adding a little more dimension and depth. Here the color is going to have to get different. I'll have to use more of a grayish tone there. Okay, um, now let's go back. Let's go back and, and add some more depth to the eyes. I'm going to take uh, ivory black, or sorry, ultramarine blue I had ivory black in my palette from this different painting I was working on, and I have to remember, don't use the ivory black. Um, it's much, much better to mix your own. And I was using the ivory black because it was, uh, well, you might have seen the video, it was my painting from a dream, and that, that was a monochromatic painting, so for that I had ivory black. But for a, painting a portrait like this in the glazing technique, you want to avoid using ivory black. It just... It's better to mix your own. You can make it a lot richer, give it more depth. And I gotta get just a sip of water again. Okay, let's add some depth here. So I have kind of a darker color. Uh, ultramarine blue, romber dark. Those would be the two colors to use for this, basically. And we're making a very, very dark gray. And I'm going to go on top of the eyes. So let's zoom in there again so you really can see what's going on. And I'm going to thin it out a little bit with some more matte medium. Thin it out just a little bit. There you go. Now you can see it. And I'm going to just uh, start darkening the lower left corner and especially the area on top because that's where we have that cast shadow coming from the upper eyelid fold. And I want to pay attention how far it goes down because I want to put that, that reflection in just the right spot. Now let's add the pupil. That's the dark spot in the middle. And let's go with the other eye and do the same thing. We're going to add a dark layer for the top of the eye and leave a little area for that reflection. But this is just the cast shadow from that upper eyelid fold because, again, like I said, it has a lot of thickness to it. The eyebrows cast a shadow, the eyelashes eyelashes, excuse me, cast a shadow. Then we have the, the hat casting a shadow. So 
You know, this whole area is a lot darker than what you think. You definitely don't want to use white for the white of his eye. Um, the only area we're going to use it is on the reflections. Okay, maybe just refine that a tiny bit. I added a little bit of titanium white to this blue because I think his eye needs to just come over a tiny bit. All right. I want to darken that area. It got a little too light. I soften that a bit. I don't want to lose that, that luminosity, that richness. Okay, let's look at the other eye and just uh, darken that in a few key spots. And I'm going to darken the area by the pupil. There's many different little reflections as it's probably reflecting buildings and different objects since he's outside. So we don't have just one little pinpoint of light in the middle, but there's several of them. I want to get those uh, those details in there. All right, just going to really go back to the other eye and define that edge a little more. Lastly, let's go on there and add some reflections. So we'll start with uh, we're going to start with titanium white, mix it into the color we previously mixed to make it a little darker. So we're having kind of a bluish white. You don't want to start with just straight white. Rather, we want to use something <clears throat> in between that. So we can add some nuances. If you can see that mixture, there it is. Titanium white mixed into the other mixture of the eye. And we're going to, uh, again, just add a little highlight there. I'm going to just add a pinpoint here on top of the area I left from the glazes. Now I'm going to darken this mixture and make it more transparent, adding matte medium. And can you see that? adding matte medium and going over it. And what does that look like? It looks something like this. If you look at my white card, something like that. So it's still pretty translucent, but it has some white added, so it's going to add just a few little highlights in a few key spots, and I don't want them too bright. You basically just want to barely see them. I'm trying to put them in just the right spot too. I might have to go back and refine this later. And then there was a little reflection down here. And believe it or not, this is not the end of it. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more glazes and more depth and, and nuances to these eyes. This is more of a foundation. But we got to start somewhere. Okay. That's adding, that's adding some more character to his eyes, and they're really starting to come alive. But uh, there's more nuances I'm going to have to do. But that's a start. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that dry, and now I'm going to go back. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm going to work on the mouth. There we go. And just so you can see all the facial features together, I'm going to zoom out a hair more. Okay. All right, now let's... Uh, Let's work on the mouth. So, very, very important part of the face. And the mouth obviously is, you know, where you can tell whether they're smiling. A lot of the smiling is created through the eyes and the look of the wrinkles on the eyes, but the mouth says a lot. And 
What I'm going to concentrate on is darkening his lip a little bit and getting the gum lines defined on his teeth and then darkening the shadows on the teeth a little bit as well. So uh, let's take this current glaze we have from before. I don't remember what it was for, but you just, just scan your palette and look for things. Look for things that you can use because that's a great way to really not waste paint and not have to go through the trouble of mixing it all over again. So look for things that are close. You'll train your eye to do that the more you do it. Look for something that has a similar value. And then take some alizarin crimson. Let's just make this a bit more pink. And I'm using the alizarin crimson because that's a dark red. We don't want organic red orange, that's a lighter red. That's better for areas like this that are lighter in value. We're going to add that alizarin crimson. So we have alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, raw sienna, raw umber dark, maybe even a little titanium white. And we're going to just add that using our round brush to find the edge of the lips. We're, we're not only enriching the color here, but we're also defining some of the mustache shapes. Now on that reference photo, we had some really, really interesting mustache shapes and if I just pan over to the left I think you'll be able to see it just to show you for a moment you have these really interesting shapes here and textures we want to get those different textures we don't want to just paint hair 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 you know all spaced evenly apart no we really want to pay attention to the pattern some some of the angles are like this some are straight some are angled like that they're all going in different directions and they're some areas are wider, some are narrower. So you want to see the abstract shapes. Get up really close, study that reference photo, look at the abstract shapes, and replicate as much as you can based off your reference photo. Now let's pan back over to the picture. Okay, I'm going to again define some of these shapes here. And I see that right above this tooth, that would be this guy right here, we have the two main teeth and you really want to differentiate your teeth. Common mistake I see is for people to make the teeth all evenly spaced apart and make the teeth all the same width. But you know when you brush your own teeth you'll notice your two front teeth are bigger than the rest. They're wider than the rest and then the other ones are narrower. Um, so pay attention to those shapes, these two larger teeth in the middle, and make sure you know what's what, and identify them, and say, okay, these are the two teeth in the middle. These are the two front teeth. Then you have your next tooth, and then you have the canine tooth that has a little bit of a sharp cutting edge, so the angle changes. These ones are flat across. This one tends to angle downward like that, like this. And uh, of course, that's how we're able to, you know, eat meat and different things like that that we enjoy. But you need to have that canine tooth in. But what I was saying as I went off in this little tangent was to pay attention to where these shapes fall. So I'm trying to paint this little mustache shape, this little divot. I just had to lighten that up with a little titanium white this little divot, and it falls basically right above this tooth here, this third tooth, I guess you could say. And if any of you are dentists or dental hygienists, you know what these teeth are called. You have specific names, but um, let me just put, paint that little divot there on his mustache above the tooth. And I see there's another divot next to it. And I'm using, again, this color of the lips or it doesn't matter, you can use the same as lips. We don't know where they begin, where they end, under his mustache, but you can use the same color. It's just skin tone color. And we're going to just add a little bit of a shape right here. This is at a different angle. And I want to make sure I have the spacing right, that it's you know, not just all even with the others. It's a little random. So we have this shape, we 
We have another shape here, which is going to be a slightly different color because it's starting to get into the texture of the mustache itself. So when you're not seeing the skin tone color, you're seeing the color of the mustache hairs casting a shadow on the other mustache hairs. And now all of a sudden that color is shifting from a pinkish brown to more of a grayish brown. And so you want to see that distinction. So I'm painting these little patterns here. And we'll come back in and we'll refine these even more. This, this shadow can come down a little further. I, I had it up too high. It really should come down closer to the lip. And we have this strong shape right here that I can reinforce. You see that? <clears throat> Let me get a quick sip of water again. And let's see, we have this shape. I'm just going to go over this whole shadow here with this glaze and just kind of fill this area in a little bit. We're going to add some shadows coming from below the mustache. Let's use a slightly warmer tone because we're breaking into some of the flesh showing through. And not just um, his mustache hair. Alright, let's get back to the lip area. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a divot here. A little divot there. Okay, now let's... Um, the mustache is not done, okay, it's just, just so you know, it's just kind of the foundation. I mean, yeah, we've had some previous foundations, but it's just one of many layers that will have to be added. But I want to move on to defining the gums around his teeth. So I'm using the same kind of pinkish color, the salmon color. Test the value on your canvas, make sure it's not too dark, not too light. If you don't like it, then go back and try again better to try again with a new color, a new mixture, than, than use one that's not good and get frustrated. Yeah, it's really raining outside as I record this, so you're probably hearing some of the water dripping from the roof. It's just uh, pretty crazy out there. we got these nice spring rains here in Wisconsin right now. Okay, so I'm defining the um, gum line and I'm just going on top of the the sketch and really just getting the corners just getting the corners of the mouth so I'm just getting in the corners here and now now let's uh, let's take a little organic red orange I haven't used that color yet I don't think maybe I did yeah once organic red orange alizarin crimson Let's rinse off the brush. Sometimes I tend to uh, go too long before I rinse off my brush. And a little bit of burnt sienna. You can see this little glaze I'm making right over here. There we are. Alizarin crimson, raw or dark. I'm sorry, alizarin crimson, organic pyrrol red orange, and burnt sienna. And I'm making this glaze right here. And grab this white card so you can see kind of what it looks like on there. Get a sense for it right here. Okay, and you can see it's actually fairly dark. It's fairly opaque at this point because we have a lot of layers on the canvas. Again, you start off with those really, really light glazes and you progressively start using ones that are more opaque especially when you're working on small areas now let's go on this little area below his teeth and that's where his his uh, tongue would be but it's in shadow it's going to be very dark in value but it does have a certain richness to it because it is the tongue it's quite 
pink, so we want to use that kind of reddish pinkish color for that. And we can even go over this area too, just to enrich that area a bit. Okay. And let's uh, let's darken his teeth, and then after that, I'm going to finish off in this lesson with this last part. So, one of the things you want to keep in mind as you're painting teeth is that they are not white. I did a video on that. I did a lesson on that at realisticacrylic.com. Teeth are not white. So as we hold it here, you can see already it's not white, but uh, if I pan over to the reference image, there we are, and hold this white card up on there, flush against the Kindle, you see the teeth are not white. They're not white. You can see they're substantially darker than this white card, okay? And that's something you want to keep in mind because teeth actually are much darker in value than what we think, okay? Um, and you're, you're going to want to use kind of a romber dark and titanium white to capture that color. Um, the reason they're darker in color is because, first of all, they aren't white, even if a bright light was shining on them. They're more of an off-white. But then we have the shadow being cast from the mustache, from the mouth, and it darkens the value. So let's add... Let's take some raw sienna, romber dark, and titanium white. And we're going to mix a little bit of matte medium into that. So I'll just show you this glaze right here, if you can see that. And it should be kind of an off-white. Now let's put it on the white card. You'll be able to see more of what it looks like. Something like this. Uh, there you are. Something like this. All right. So try to get it so the light's not shining on it. I think you can see that. Anyway, it is um, kind of an off-white color, and we're going to go over on top. Add a if you if it's not dark enough, add a little bit of raw umber dark to it. And that's what it looks like now with a little more raw umber dark added right here. You can see the difference. And I'm going to just darken on the left hand side going to the right because it's darker towards the left as the mouth is casting more of a shadow. As the teeth are closer to the front, there is more of a highlight on them. So darker to the left, brighter towards the right. and just add that little bit of a glaze there and then a glaze on the other side as well and because this side is going to get a little bit of a shadow too and there's going to be a lot more glazes added we're going to have to lighten this side more but that's a start that's a start right there so i'm going to finish up the video here and zoom out so you can see what it looks like with some of the additions we've done in this lesson. Hey, there's still a little ways to go. All right, I'm going to be adding some bonus videos here to take us between step number seven and step number eight, which will be putting in the final nuances and details and finishing your painting, bringing it home, so to speak. Thank you so much for joining, um, for watching this masterclass. I really appreciate your involvement in the group just doing this challenge and seeing so many artists taking part in it brightens my day um, it's just it's so encouraging to see everybody using the talent god has given them hey if you like this video give it a thumbs up um, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this stay tuned for the last master class in the series master class number eight which is going to be finishing your painting with nuances and bringing it home so thank you so much for watching this video god bless you Stay in touch and I look forward to sharing with you the next lesson, the final lesson 
and seeing your fantastic paintings. Have a fantastic rest of your day.